Hello, this is Dr. Gay from Forsyth MRI, and this is a short video to show how we do an arthrogram of the wrist prior to an MRI exam. So we call it an MRI wrist arthrogram, where we'll start with your arthrogram, we'll put fluid into the proximal joint here, and then we'll send the patient to the MRI machine for the MRI scan. And the contrast will show up as bright on the MRI scan, and we'll make sure the contrast is in this joint. If the contrast extravasates into the joint here, the mid-carpal compartment, we would suspect a tear of a ligament, maybe this scapholunate ligament between the scaphoid bone and lunate bone. If the contrast is in here and the, the ligament is torn, it'll extravasate into here. And we can also see a tear of the triangular fiber cartilage. There's a little horizontal band of cartilaginous tissues here called the triangular fiber cartilage. If the contrast extravasates down through that into the distal radial ulnar joint, we know they may have a tear of their TFCC. So that's why we do the procedure prior to MRI. It helps us evaluate ligament tears and TFCC tears. And we're gonna start off with this view. We do an AP view of the wrist. We put the palm down. And so the, this part of the wrist is poking up and the palm is down. And that will open up the dorsal part of the joint. And we're gonna aim about right here. Uh, oftentimes people will aim about right here between the radius, scaphoid and lunate bones. It's another good place to aim about right here. You just got to be careful if you do that not to go too far in here because you can easily go on this side of the ligament. There's a scaphoid ligament. If you go too far this way, maybe on the other side, and the contrast will go into the mid-carpal compartment. So lately, I've been doing it over here. I'll go around the mid-body of the uh, scaphoid here on the proximal end, and I will put a needle in, 25 gauge needle or a short needle, and kind of aim for the back edge of the uh, scaphoid bone here and there's the needle looking right down the barrel I'll go down and inject contrast so once we inject contrast we'll see the contrast filling up this joint I'll go back to this view here you can see there's no contrast in the joint and now contrast has been injected I move remove the needle but you can see that contrast in the joint it'll go all the way across we only give about one or two cc's a very small amount of contrast because joint is small and again that TFCC is right here that little uh, dark area that has no contrast, the TFCC is intact. If that was torn, we might see the contrast go down through the tear. And again, there's no contrast in the mid-carpal compartment here. It's all contained in this joint. In the solution we use, we start with 40 cc's of saline, and into that we mix uh, two things. We mix 10 cc's of Omnipake 320 strength and 0 0.25 cc's of Magnavist and MRI contrast. And those three things, the saline, the CT contrast, and MRI contrast, all are injected, only a couple cc's. And again, it fills up the joint here. It will show white on the x-ray. And on the MRI machine, it will also show up as white like this. And we can see that the contrast is here in the proximal carpal row. This is the TFCC, that little cartilaginous band. There's no tear of that. The contrast does not go through that. It looks like a nice TFCC. And also, the scaphalunate ligament right here is intact. The lunotrichetral luno ligament here is intact. There's no contrast going into the mid part here. But it looks like they do have an injury here of the hamate bone that's bright. This is a short axis view. We see this is the hook of the hamate bone here. It's separated from the rest of the hamate. So they have a displaced fracture involving the hook of the hamate bone. But the other structures are intact. So again, this is how to do an MRI of the wrist. Uh, I'm sorry, an orthogram of the wrist prior to MRI. Thank you so much.